Hey guys, I'm Heidi with AMP Home Church, and welcome back. We are on day 75 of Seeing the Unseen by Randy Alcorn here, a study as we are setting our minds on the things that are eternal. So wrapping up yet another, another, another wonderful week, kind of like that, um, finishing up this week's topic with the incomparable beauty of purity. So if you guys have your books, feel free to turn with me to page, um, or day 75, page 149. If not, you can join in. We'll go ahead and read through this. And then of course, going to his website to see the additional information he has on this topic. Be sure to tap that subscribe button and then hit the little bell icon that will give you a notification of these videos when they come out each day, Monday through Friday. And then of course, be sure to come and join us this Sunday for our church service. They go live in our Facebook group at 1 p.m. on Sunday afternoon. So be sure to set a reminder for whatever time zone you're in and come over and join us for that. But let's go ahead and dive into day 75. It says to embrace purity is to lay claim to a magnificent gift. Purity creates beauty that will never end. Sexual purity is not an option for an obedient Christian. It's a requirement. God's will is centered on our character and moral purity much more than our circumstances such as job, housing, and schooling. Want to know God's will? You don't have to wonder. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 says, It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality. Again, a topic that our current culture, even within the church, has really stepped away from God's word and become very lax on. So, so many things now are just so acceptable, even within a church setting most of the time, that we don't realize, and I don't think we, we quite seek to find the truth of scripture when it comes to these topics. It says when God calls on us to pursue purity, he's not telling us to abandon joy. In fact, he's inviting us to choose what will bring us the greatest joy, right? He's not just a kill joy. He's the ultimate father wanting to give us true joy. To embrace purity is to lay claim to a magnificent gift. Purity is incomparably beautiful, like the fragrance of a rose after a summer shower, and it's beauty that will never end, because all who live in heaven will be pure. Revelation 21 verse 27 says, Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does, who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen? That's where we want our name. That's the only list that matters. Couple perspectives from God's word here. Proverbs 14, 27 says, The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life that one may turn away from the snares of death. Where is our fear? The fear of the Lord should be the only fear we know, right? Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 through 7 say, Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. Notice that. Put to death what is earthly in you. So if something is dead, it's not coming back. It is gone. It's done. You've moved past it. It's over. There's no hope for it to come back, right? Sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. So let's hold that mirror up to ourselves. Have you truly put to death, like it no longer is a part of your life or anything that you do, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. That's terrifying. In these, you too once walked when you were living in them, right? We all, we all were in this at some point, to some level, to some degree, in some way. But we no longer walk as an enemy of the cross, right? Some perspectives from God's people. John Bunyan said, either sin will keep you from the word or the word will keep you from sin. John Piper said, little souls make little lusts have great power. The soul, as it were, expands to encompass the magnitude of its treasure. The human soul was made to see and savor the supremacy of Christ. Nothing else is big enough to enlarge the soul as God intended and make little lusts lose their power. So let's go ahead and look at this blog post. How do you define purity? It's epm.org forward slash define purity. We've got a little write up here and there's a video to go along with it as well. So I highly recommend you guys go and pull this up again, epm.org forward slash define purity. And he starts off by saying, God says you should be holy because I, the Lord God, am holy, right? We see that in Leviticus 20, verse 26, first Peter 1, 16. Again, talking about that, since it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. In other words, holiness is built into the character of God. He has a separateness and hatred toward sin. Separateness, hatred toward sin. Does not compute with a holy and righteous God, right? 
God does not want to be near sin, and he does not want us to be near it either, right? The greatest argument for sexual purity is God's holiness. If we wish to be godly, we must wish to live in sexual purity. This doesn't mean being anti-sex, for God has created our sexual identities as a gift. But a sexual relationship is to take place only in the sacred relationship of marriage between one man and one woman. We are sexual beings, whether married or not, but it is reserved only for the marriage relationship. God is holy in his view of sex and marriage and expects us to be holy too. Again, a topic that our culture has really mixed up and really changed around, right? Everybody lives together. Everybody's shacking up. You get married down the road if you get married at all. And it's really acceptable in, in all circles these days. We are told in 1 Thessalonians 4 that we are to be holy and abstain from immorality. In fact, we are told that it, that it is God's will. I find it ironic that so often we ask, Lord, what's your will? What do you really want me to do? But in fact, there are a number of passages of scripture where God says, this is my will. This is what I want you to do, right? Again, if we read God's word, he really reveals his will to us very, very clearly. A lot of times we just don't want to, we don't want to accept it. We don't want to take that, right? And that's where most of these issues come from. In 1 Corinthians 6.18, we're told to flee from immorality, right? It says flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexual, sexually immoral person sins against his own body. We are, not to, we are not to just wait until we get into a compromising situation and sort of hope for the best and play it by ear. When we see temptation coming and we should see it coming, we should run and literally move away from it. I was talking with a good friend about fleeing from sexual immorality. He called me on the phone and said he had been down to the country court, county courthouse where he walked by a kiosk and saw a magazine that tempted him toward impurity. And he said, I ran. I sprinted all the way to the other side of the building. And I thought, this is great. Even though this verse may not be talking about literal running, right? There is a time where we should physically run away. In the case of my friend, I think God was honored by his desire to separate himself immediately from temptation. It is important to realize that sex is a positive thing, not created by Satan, but intended for good by God. After he created all things, he said, behold, it was very good. But we also have to recognize that we live in a world that is under sin's curse and therefore must be very careful as God's people to separate ourselves from the behaviors of the world around us where immorality is routine and even celebrated. We need to be sure that not only are we avoiding celebrating it, but also that we are separating ourselves from it to be God's pure people, holy in his sight. And he has on the site there a little video where it's him um, discussing what we just read. It's a quick little video. And then down at the bottom of this are additional blog posts for more on that topic. If this is something that you would like, you know, a little more information on a deeper study on, of course, you can always reach out to Pastor Brandon, Pastor Travis, myself and Lex as well. Um, if you need someone to talk to and help you through um, whatever situation it might be that you are facing. But one thing is, is very, very clear in today's reading. We must flee from these things that cause us to fall into sinful ways, sinful behaviors, right? Immorality, impurity, we must flee from these things. We must live holy lives as the Lord is holy, right? That is what we pursue. No, we're not perfect. It doesn't mean we get everything right. It doesn't mean it's easy and it's just this magic cure-all pill, but it is something that every day we should improve, be improving little bit by little bit as we grow in God's understanding of God's word and just spiritual maturity as well. So praying this blesses you guys and, and helps you. Um, I know this whole study has been a great blessing to me and I hope to see you guys on Sunday for service again that's 1 p.m. Eastern time. So set a reminder in whatever time zone you're in or come over on the Facebook group. And if you click on the events tab, it shows you all of the different things we have going on. If you just click that you are going, it will give you a little pop up one hour beforehand um, to set a reminder for yourself. All right, you guys have a great weekend. I hope you enjoy it. Come Lord Jesus. If not, we'll see you on Sunday. Bye guys. <laughs>